Hello everyone, this is Tina from Tina's Workshop and I am here again. Third time's a charm, right? Granny Square Yarn. Let's see, Granny, it says Granny All-in-One Square, but Red Heart Granny Square Yarn, however you want to say it. Um, I'm sure you've watched my, well, hopefully you've watched my videos. I have tried two other times. Um, with this, my first try with, with this, then I did the planned pooling with it. I still didn't get that to come out quite right. Then I got this one, which I really liked the colors of because some people thought I was not trying hard enough because I didn't care for the colors. So I got one I liked the colors of. I tried it again. It still didn't work. But then a couple nights ago, I saw um, repeat words, repeat crafter me. She's on YouTube and she has a website and I'm going to link all her stuff below. And she did a video with a pattern that she created. That's a three dimensional um, flower square. And I decided I wanted to try it. I really liked the way the square looked. I like granny squares and all, but you know, I haven't fully been feeling the way the different ones come together with the colors that are in them. This one's the one I liked the best, which gets a square kind of like that. I really actually kind of like that one. This is the um, Aran Cream. Um, this one comes out, come on, focus, like that. This is the uh, Black Hyperviolet. And so I, I went for it. I tried it. I tried hers. And you ready? You ready? Here is my first square. How stinking cute is that? And here is my second square. It's a little harder to see with the, the black to it. Here's the backs of them. And they're a, a much smaller size square than the, if you were doing the regular granny square because you're doing three rows here that are going vertical. So you are ending up with a much smaller square. But I like how it comes out. I think it's super cute, these little flowers. And I could totally see making something with this, like a little bag or I don't know, something. Um, even if you use this as like a center and then work something out from it, I think that would be really cute. You could do just the flower itself and use it as an applique on thing. Heck, you could do something like that and create like a little bouquet. Focus on it. There we go. So there's, there's a lot of possibilities with these squares, and I think they're just super cute. But now, I will say, it still didn't quite work for me. But you can finagle it a lot easier than you can with the other. And once I think you've done it, you know, one or two times, you're going to know exactly how you need to finagle it. Because if you look at this one, You'll see right there on that, where the white, oh, right there. I still had that cream color in that first round. You can see it better on the back. So on this first one I did, I, so she uses a size H hook. And, and I didn't do this where you're fully watching me do it because this is her pattern. Um, it's not a, you know, Red Heart's free pattern or something. This is her pattern. So I will link her video and you can go watch her video and she explains it really well. So you can watch her video and do it. But I'm going to tell you what I did differently, how I made it work for me. So on the first one I did, get enough of it to go all the way around and 
tails here. So my tail from the first one, I mean, that's how long my tail is. And I still had two, two or three, oh, I think I've had three more single crochets still to do. And there's hook sizes. So I went all the way down to an F to do that center square still could not quite get it to come out right and if you watch her she just went for it and i'm like oh, why is this not working and i'm trying to think of things i could do in the end i was like i'm just going to leave it because as these sit it doesn't take them long to kind of curl up and you cannot see where i did left that inside of there so i was like you know what it's good i'm gonna leave it so then i went to my second round and I had way too much so I ended up switching back to the H hook on that round went around and your main stitch in that round is a double crochet I went around and in still ended up with too much I ended up doing was doing an extra double crochet in every other petal but the way these petals are compared to the way your granny square is you can add extra stitches into those and you're not of your flower so it was a way to be able to finagle this and adding those extra stitches in because that was the problem i was having doing the squares is I would have enough, I would have too much, and I don't care how much I was adjusting, it wasn't working. Or if I was changing the hook, then I was still having that opposite issue. So changing the hook wasn't going to fix every issue. But with this, you could add those extras in, and it worked really well. So then I went to the next row. I stuck with the H through the rest of the square, and in the next row, I ended up having to do one extra double crochet in every one of the petals. She was doing three, I had to do four. And that worked out, worked great. Then in the last color of petals here, um, you're now doing trebles. And I ended up having to do one extra only in the very last petal. And again, you can't, let's see if I can even show you. Okay, here's petal. Colors to notice. So you can see there's three trebles in that one. And there's one. It's absolutely amazing thing. Okay, so then your last color becomes your square. I had extra. So here was the extra after I wove in my end and here is my extra that's still on my skein. So I had quite a bit of extra. So I cut off it a shorter end here so I could weave it in, which would then leave me a whole bunch here so I could actually do my magic ring down here in my next one. I could do it down here in the cream, which is going to get hidden underneath that row of single crochets. So that should hopefully help me get maybe through So I did that one and like, you know, didn't wasn't perfect, but I was writing down as I went and I'm like, okay, I can do this. This works. And then I decided to try it in the next color. So I started with the next color. I had way too much. I'm like, all right, let's go back to the H hook and see what happens. So I go back to the H hook. I still had way too much and I'm like hmm 
how are we going to figure this out? So then I got an idea because I kept having to pull it out anyway. I held my finger where my last stitch was and I pulled it all out until I got to the very beginning where I started and then I measured it. I measured how much it took to do that first part. Then I went to where the color change is and I pulled that out and I measured it and then I did my magic ring right where that measurement had started and I worked it and had no problems. My color worked perfectly. It ended right where it needed to. So then I went to my next one. In this one, it's the pink. Went to the next one. Now, on that first one for the second color, I had done one extra double crochet in each. For this one, I had to do, no, the first one I did one extra in every other petal. This one, I did one in every other petal and it worked. So then I went to the next color, the lavender in this one. Last time I had done one extra double crochet in each petal. On this one, I did one extra double crochet in each and one extra in the last three. So the last three had one in every one extra in each one, but the rest of them was one in every other. So it was a little bit different, but it wasn't too bad. Again, it was easy enough to finagle. As I worked it, I got to the end and I was like, nope, that didn't quite work. I looked at how much was left and I took, I pulled out one double crochet and I measured it. And to see how much I needed for double crochet, and I looked at how much I had had left and I went, okay, I think if I do one in each of these, that's going to work out. So that's what I did. It worked out. You know, it's still that little bit of extra work you have to do, you know, to be able to do it, but it's a lot more doable. Instead of keep pulling and pulling a just tension because where you start adding and subtracting, you eventually start to notice that. So then I went to the blue row. And the first time I had done one extra treble in the last petal. And on this one, I had to do one extra treble in every other petal until the last three. And I had to do all three. So it was a lot different. But I got it to work. And then I switched to the black. And when I switched to the black, I worked it knowing that's the last round. Again, it's not as big of a deal if I messed it up. So I clipped it so I could weave in. So there's my little end to weave. And then this is what was still left on the skein. So I still had that much left on the skein. So again, there was a decent amount left. But again, there it's not as big of a deal. So... As long as I can get that first round to work, we're not so bad. So on the ones when I don't have enough, though, if I have that extra from the one before, I know I can work over that. When I do the green, which will add a little bit of extra because I'm not having to clip that initial four inches. Because that would have given me a couple more stitches. And with that extra that you're going over with the magic ring, you can get that extra one there too. So I think going forward in the following squares, I should be able to work it okay. And having, being able to then adjust these ones in here, it works. I can get it to work, which is absolutely amazing. I can actually use this yarn. And do something with now and i think some of the colorways that they have actually come out really cute when you're creating the flower with them and the one that she does she uses um uh what did she call it or not what did she call it what was the colorway um she was using uh rainbow 
Aqua Sugar is the name of the color that she was using, and it has the white around the edge. Or, okay, your first color is yellow, which is great for the center of a flower. The next color is kind of like then a blue, then a peach, kind of like this, and then the last one's white. And so, in a flower, it looks super cute. Um, so with the different colors, I think you could really do something cute. And then, oh, I, I just got to figure out some things. Once I've seen some of these really cute tote bags that have the different grannies that kind of come up that like point. And I don't know how really cute. Or you got a contrast with one of these colors and did plain squares maybe and did you could do plain squares around each one and then attach all those to you know so that it together so you created these borders and stuff for the flower really cute because it's it I mean it worked well enough it, it it's flexible i guess that would be the right word it's flexible to where it will work and you can use it so if you're one of those like me that could not get this yarn to work for anything then try this try her pattern and even if you're not doing using this granny square yarn I think it would still be absolutely adorable. Could you imagine these like whole white one or something like that? They would be really pretty. So you could still do this pattern with any regular yarn or if you wanted to do color changes and change things up. But it works. You can make it work with the granny square yarn. So give it a try. Let me know if you tried it. Let me know if it worked for you. I would love to know if it worked for you. Um, put a comment below let me know I hope this will help if you have not already found this yourself I hope this will help because you know words um, leading you in this direction that you can find her YouTube uh, video and page so she's got it written out on her um, website and then she's got the tutorial on her page and I so I hope this will help some of you out there um, make sure and click like click subscribe if you'd like to see more and we'll see you all again soon bye